<laughs> I didn't want to have to be one of those guys making videos in bathrooms, but damn it, the wind picked up outside of SoFi Stadium so nobody could hear what the hell it is that I had to say, so why not come over here and record it again? But first and foremost, big kudos to the Baltimore Ravens' valiant effort yesterday evening. Did not get the job done. Pittsburgh got the W. Then today, the Pittsburgh Steeler legend himself, former draftee Mike Vrabel, coached up his Tennessee Titans to take down the Jacksonville Jaguars, thus knocking them out the postseason and plugging us into the postseason. Let me just say right now, to the individual who decided to go out there and play and spin that terrible towel after the Jacksonville Jaguars done handed us an L earlier on in the season, you will learn of the curse of playing with our terrible towel. It means nothing but bad things for you in the future, and now today, the future has become the present, and you are out of the playoffs, and damn it, we are in. But there's a couple of things that have to be said. First and foremost, what did I say after we lost those three consecutive games? Pittsburgh's going to somehow find a way to win three of their last four. They lost, you know, the first of the four and won three in a row. Then what happened to transpire? We're going to find somehow to find our way into the postseason. That's exactly what the hell happened. And we got a ticket to the dance. Now, are we all optimistic across the doggone board? Not so much. But one way or another, all you want is just a chance to compete an additional week of football, and that's exactly what we got. We've got some kudos to go around the locker room. Najee Harris, over 1,000 yards again. If I'm not mistaken, first since Alfred Morris in the early 2010s to do so, three straight 1,000-yard seasons to start a career magnificent. Jalen Warren, way to continue to fight. I love our running back room. Earlier on in the season, I was kind of on the outs with Najee Harris. There was moments to where this man, for whatever reason, could not seem to find a gap that was open, tried to go outside and be some sort of a pseudo speedster. But he has fought incredibly hard with the rock in his hand to not only finish runs, which I believe he's one of the best, if not the best, in the NFL at finishing runs, but putting up countless great performances. You love to see that. Whole lot of people stepped up. Mike Tomlin, like I said, if we're able to get the essence of the Pittsburgh Steelers activated once more in the final three weeks, I won't be on the outs on you again. And guess what? I'm not. All right? Now, granted, we're still in the same sort of situation. Well, we've got those consecutive winning seasons. We just have to not be complacent. I just want to see us go out and compete and play our brand of football. Because like I said in the countless videos I have produced over the course of the past five some years to where we've been relatively mundane, we're too complacent and we don't play our brand of football we constantly go out and adjust to the opposition we have to make the opposition adjust to us and that's exactly what the hell we just so happened to do the last three weeks and we took care of business and punched our way into the postseason George Pickens didn't have a catch and yet he was one of the most elated individuals on the sideline. That's what I like to see. Great morale coming out the locker room. We thought, you know, this man was ready to turn on the team. And what do you know? After two monster performances here in a game in which he didn't see the football, that man smiling on the sidelines. Deontay Johnson not making bonehead plays outside of 71-yard touchdowns, which ain't no bonehead play unless you happen to play for the other team. And defensively, you got beat in the secondary. One way or another, Pittsburgh got the WTJ. Watt just locked up becoming the first ever defensive player in NFL history to have three different seasons leading the league in sacks. If this man doesn't get the defensive player of the year, I don't know who deserves it more. Miles Garrett had a very good season. Michael Parsons, very good season. Nobody on the stat sheet has dominated the way that T.J. Watt has dominated. He's been robbed of the defensive player of the year before. Now, granted, it didn't mess around to go to Aaron Donald. That one season, Stephon Gilmore just so happened to get it. But it would be criminal if T.J. Watt does not win the defensive player of the year this year. And unfortunately, he did get that one. What was it grade two MCL sprain? So he'll probably not play next week unless he puts on a brace or something of that nature. I would much rather have a situation where he doesn't cause future injury or a larger injury. But if the man wants to play and it seems as if he should be able to be relatively productive, suit him up. But we'll talk about that when that time comes. One way or another, we got the doggone W and Mason Rudolph incredibly poised. And as far as I'm concerned, 
A lot of people are going to say, well, should it be Pickett? Should it be Rudolph who starts next week against whether it be Buffalo or Miami, depending on what the fallout of this game just so happens to be? Me personally, I would prefer if it was Miami. Either way, we're going to be underdogs, but we'll talk about that when we do a preview. We got the job done and we got into the postseason. That's all that matters. And shout out to everybody in the AFC North. The first time since 1935, there's been an entire division in football that has been above 500. That says something about the competition and maybe the AFC North just mess around and be back because I love to be associated with winners. I love to be associated with competition. I love to be associated with some of the best teams in the NFL. And congratulations to the Browns, Bengals, and Ravens for putting on a magnificent performance all season long to go and finish over 500. But uh, <clears throat> just want to let you know something real quick. Despite the fact that, you know, there was injuries across the entire division, Pittsburgh also dealt with injuries as well. Five and one in the division. So as far as who runs the North, despite the fact that the Ravens will hang up the banner, Cincinnati is last, Cleveland's in front of us. Nobody had a better divisional record than the Pittsburgh Steelers. But there is no moral victories. There's only actual victories that's out there. We got 10 of those things. Shout out to Mike Tomlin. Tying I believe right now is at 173 all time on the wins list. So he's got a little bit more to go to get into that top 10. We'll see where things go over the course of the next couple of seasons. I believe he's only 20 behind Chuck Knoll to become the all time winningest coach in Pittsburgh Steeler history. One way or another, we are headed to the postseason. We got ourselves a W and we get to watch Pittsburgh Steeler football for an additional week. And if they keep playing the way that they've played the last three weeks, you could actually watch the game and not feel like perhaps, you know, suicide would be a better option. One way or another, get your hands up in here. Pittsburgh Steelers got a W, and we got to celebrate that one way or another. Whether we're optimistic, pessimistic for next week, we get an opportunity to go to the playoffs, and only 14 teams get the chance every single year to do that with a new format. But that's neither here nor there. Steelers on three, win on six. One, two, three, Steelers. Four, five, six win. Let's go, baby. We got ourselves a W. Now, if you would excuse me, I'm about to go lay my ass down, go to sleep, so I can fly back to the East Coast, because West Coast time got me messed up. I'm waking up at 5 a.m., because my body's still on East Coast time. It's ridiculous. I don't like the West Coast. I went to a Chargers game today. No Chargers. No, they blew it. This is the second time I watched the Chargers live. They always blowing games. It's ridiculous, but that's neither here nor there. Go Steelers. They got the job done. Where do I exit? Because usually I walk off of the set, but there's no, I'm in a bathroom. Like this is entrapment at this point. Let me just go, I'll, I'll just, I'll go inside the shower and then I'll just cut it off from there. I'm literally talking to myself. I have nobody to talk to here. Somebody should get me a friend. The following announcement has been paid for by the Chisel Tadanas. Hey, would you trade $10 to learn how to break into YouTube? I just dropped my very first ebook, Commit to the Commitment and Consistency, How to Create a Profitable YouTube Channel with the very same tools and framework that I use to build my YouTube channel over the course of the past eight years from zero to over 720,000 plus subscribers. So click the link in my description, go to chiseltadanashop.com and grab your ebook today. $10 to create a platform that you can use for the remainder of your life. What are you waiting for?